All right, so we got to talk about Jordan Poole and Draymond Green because this story just refuses to die. So first, let's run a little recap of the whole situation. Last October, we all saw it. Draymond Green stole on Jordan Poole during practice, right? A couple days later, you know, it comes out. Maybe he was talking a lot of shit, got chin check, you know, Draymond. That's his his style of veteran leadership, I guess. So he wanted to, to put the young boy in line. But then he apologized. Then when the Warriors got eliminated from the playoffs, Steve Kerr was talking about how there was no trust in the locker room. Draymond came out saying, ah, you know, a lot of that's my fault. That's on me. Shortly thereafter, Jordan Poole gets traded to the Wizards in this deal that brought CP3 to the to the Warriors. And they asked him, have you heard from Draymond since you got traded? And he was like, I'm on the Wizards now. It's all about me and Kuzma, which that's an interesting pairing. But um, then Cam comes out on it is what it is. And he's like, yo, here's what really went down. He said, Jordan Poole was saying to Draymond, when you were at Michigan State, I fucked more bitches at Michigan State than you did. And Jordan, I was Poole said, Jordan Poole said that to Draymond? That's I didn't what, hear that. According to Cameron, he said to Draymond, yo, you're, you're just mad. You don't like me because I fuck more Michigan State bitches than you. Oh, man. And what then a- supposedly he followed it up saying, don't worry about it, though. You're going to be in Sacramento next year. By the way, why is your Twitter handle money green? You're broke. You're not getting another contract. But supposedly, according to Cam, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. That's when he got stolen, right? Now, Draymond came out and said Cam did not have the story correct, but there were definitely some things said that shouldn't have been said. So then the next thing you know, he's on a a podcast, Draymond, talking about, oh, here's what happened, here's what happened. And Anthony Poole, Jordan Poole's dad, decided to get involved, said, Draymond, you never apologized to me or my wife. We were in the arena every game. You avoided us all year. You're just a soft-ass bitch. Come and see me anytime. So Draymond, of course, responded, no way I could avoid you for a year. I was getting my family out of the same room you were in all the time, the whole year. Words like that, you know, men don't take those lightly. Then the last thing was there was a tweet sent out from Kevin Garnett, and it wasn't actually a tweet from Kevin Garnett, but it was attributed to him. And he said, you know, this is like that Draymond situation is like the senior picking on the undersized freshman. Don't try that with me. So Draymond gets on Twitter and responds, and he's like, my rookie year, I got at you, and you started talking to yourself, pretending I wasn't talking to you. That's like the freshman picking on the senior twice his size, and you were scared. Then he pulled it down when someone pointed out that KG never actually said it. So this thing is just continues to be drama. All right, well, first first of all, the the – this is just a perfect example of how these guys live on their own planet, and none of us are from there. None of us know. <laughs> First of all, he, uh, what's his name? Jordan Poole told me, about, yo, I fuck more bitches. That, that shit is lame. He don't even know if it's true or not, but it doesn't even matter. But he's hitting them with, he's hit, what is he hitting them with? Draymond, Jordan Poole. Jordan Poole's hitting them with the light skin. That's the light skin. <laughs> that shit is corny, bro. That means nothing. You know, uh, to men in the real world, that means nothing. That was a corny line. Move on. Next thing is you said Jordan uh Jordan Poole's father. How old is Jordan Poole's father? Do we know? Is he I mean Jordan Poole? Gotta be late 40s, probably. All right, so just keep in mind the NBA players today in their 20s, their dads are in their 40s. You know what I'm saying? So these guys are still, you know, somewhat ready to get busy or whatever. Now Jordan Poole is his golden son. That's the one that brought home the bacon. You know what I mean? So yep. at what age does your father stop standing up for you? You know what? If I'm in my 40s and my son's in his 20s and he's getting, he got some kind of beef going on, I might jump in it too. You know what I mean? He's in his 40s, bro. It ain't like he's 60 years old and he don't want no smoke. He may want some smoke. You know what I mean? And he don't got nothing to lose. <laughs> Jordan, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's... He's not going to get suspended from the NBA. He can't go to a game? What? Now he's in Washington anyway. Who wants to watch the Wizards play? Nobody wants to watch the Wizards. Uh, you know, look, <clears throat> the bottom line is these guys live all oh, this. Yo, men don't act like that, Draymond said. <coughs> bro, this shit is on TV, bro. This shit is on ESPN. This shit is on Twitter. This this shit is not real. You know what I mean? It, that's what it is. Like, these guys don't live on the same planet, of the, planet as us. I don't believe all the gangster stuff. And then Draymond saying, as a rookie, he had KG shook. Bro, come on, bro. Do, do nah, you I don't believe that? 
You believe that? Hell KG, no. KG is one of the top dogs, like the trash. I don't, I don't think dog. I don't think many people could have got KG shook. It would have take, took it like an Anthony Mason. A rookie? A rookie? A wet behind the ears rookie? Got, come on, man. We don't believe that. He talking about Jordan Poole saying Draymond ain't going to get another contract. He did get the contract. He got the bag. And you know what? Getting shipped to Sacramento, you got shipped to D.C., yeah, you guys. That's, that's a lot worse than being shipped to Sacramento. I mean, look, Draymond's been there for how many years? How many rings? Their loyalty is going to be to him, to the formula, to the recipe. That's their recipe. You know what I mean? And yeah, and, and and all a lot of us, I think, are always like, yo, Draymond fell into the perfect situation going to the Warriors. He fits in perfectly with that team. And we've always asked. I think a lot of people have said, if Draymond goes somewhere else, what does he really bring to the table? What does he do? The triple you know? single. The triple single is <laughs> ineffective. But, but that being said, he's won that team's loyalty. Steve Kerr talks about him like he's as important as almost anyone on that team. I'm not going to go that far, but almost anyone on that team. Let me take it back. So the first thing I'm going to ask you is this. You saw the video, right? Of course, I did it on crime punch. I did it on, yeah, yeah, I commentated it. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Would you say that was a sucker punch or would you say that was, you know, a lot of guys have this mentality. If you get in a fight, you got to throw the first punch and you better land it. What was your take on that whole thing? Do you think it looked like some sucker shit or do you think it was Draymond saying, all right, we're going to get down then I'm going I'm to set it off? Well, between the two of them, we we don't know what was being said back and forth. But at the same time, you could call it a sucker punch because you're in practice. You're in practice, and guys are scuffing it up all the time without a punch being thrown. Draymond's coming with aggression. You get what you get. This kid, he's young. He's smaller than Draymond. He could be scared. Now you're pushing up on a kid. He's scared. Draymond already knew he was scared. You know what I mean? Draymond yeah. already knew that. Do the talking or the practice, he already knew he had him. So when he stormed at him, Jordan Poole, you know, put did the push and then he got snuffed. Is it a sucker punch? I would call I would call it a sucker punch because you're at practice. You're yeah, at I mean it's not that you know, snuck up, hit him in the back of the head type of sucker punch, but it's still like no, the setting, true. the setting is not like you're in a bar. Yeah, throw your hands. So all Draymond had to do is yo, throw your hands up. He pushed them, all he had to do is say, throw your hands up. Yep. You know what I mean? So he's a young player. I just think he's nervous. Draymond's a veteran. He wasn't going to throw the first punch, and I think Draymond knew that. You know what I mean? But this is also, and we talked about it before, when you live in that NBA bubble. So like Jordan Poole, he hit that big shot in the tournament at Michigan, and he was on the scene. I mean, he was already known, but like that put him on the scene. Next thing you know, he's making Drake dance videos. Then, you know, he goes to the Warriors. He walks into a great situation. Some people get gassed, start calling him the, the third splash brother, and he was never at that level. But people start saying things like that. I think he got that big head. I think he started thinking like he was the guy. He was invincible, you know, because he always had been. He probably was in high school. He was in college. You know, I think he found out pretty quickly when they sent him sent him packing. They could have gotten rid of Draymond if they thought Jordan Poole was more important to that franchise moving forward. Once he fucked Ice Spice, bro, his reign on top was short like leprechauns. He was in the mix. He fought, He was fucking Ice Spice. He grew a wild mustache. He started shaving his whole face just leaving the cop stash. That takes ultimate confidence. You know what I mean? And he did that because he was fucking Ice Spice. He was in the mix all of a sudden. And then that shit just went away. Boom. You're not that hot. Reality hit him. Now he's in yep. Washington. No yep. Ice Spice. You know what I mean? Where, where's the mustache now? He got rid of the mustache. Like, he don't have the confidence for the mustache no more. And, and then he on took the, the dumbest on shot the... of all. Remember the dumbest shot he took in the playoffs? Oh, yes. That was the dumbest <laughs> shot ever. He just turned, he didn't even look where he was. He just turned around and launched it. That, he that was, was like, pure... oh, hi, Steph Curry. Yeah, I got this. Pure... Bro, that shot that took, Ice Spice took that shot. Ice Spice <laughs> took that shot. Because he was so gassed. You know what I mean? He just turned around. He said, I don't care where I'm standing. I'm hitting this shit because I'm hot right now. Still staying with the same line of this delusion. Like, Draymond has built this image like he is Mr. Tough Guy. And, I mean, granted, he kicked my ass, I'm sure. But he's built this 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 whole reputation. I'm a tough guy. I'm not scared to say anything. But he's a tough guy in the NBA, in today's NBA. Like, that is not the same as... A, I mean, I don't care where he's from, you know, how tough it is, blah, blah, blah. He's not talking like that anywhere except in the NBA. In the 90s, I I, I don't think 
people put up with this type of thing that, he, that he's doing, you know? They, they, I think he would get checked. I think people call him out. He would get checked in the 90s for sure. Whether he is about that and keeps that behavior up, we'll never know. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he ain't roughing up and throwing around Rick Mahorn and Bill Embiid. They're not going for that. They, these guys here, you can't even name... We talk, We were speaking earlier. You can't even name enforcers in this league. Everybody... No. Is, a TikTok dancer, but my point is, that's what he's doing. He's the the high schooler walking around eighth graders talking shit. You know what I mean? Like the whole league, the whole league is soft. The whole NBA. Which brings me to the question: <laughs> If you if you had a team right now and you were like, "Yo, we need somebody to bring some toughness. We need an an enforcer, or you know, we need someone that that's." Because people are are not gonna push us around. Who who in the league right now can you say I want that guy on my team to bring that? You could probably count five, <clears throat> and you got to sit here for a minute and think about five. You know what I mean? Because everybody's friends, everybody's hanging out. Yeah. So Stephen Adams, obviously, you know he he he's a good enforcer. It's it's the guy. I think I, I he'll never even need to throw a punch. <laughs> yeah. He well he's just a monster. He, but you would have to go. You would have to just look at the player that's foreign, that's not part of the cult, the Western culture of the music and the the, the bitches and the fashion, because those guys they all want to be friends, they all want to be in pictures, they all want to be cutie pies. I want the ugly guys, the foreign guys that are ready to, you know. The, I would have to pick from them. That's yeah. the enforcers. No, nah, I mean yeah. Stephen Adams is a dude that, as much as he's respected and he's not some guy that throws down. His presence alone will keep the other team in check. I don't care who it is. He was the he was the only reason Shannon Sharp didn't beat the shit out of the whole Grizzly squad because Stephen Adams was there. And how many times, you know, I remember Russ, Russ, Russell Westbrook, you know, talking trash, hitting big shots, whatever. I mean, Stephen Adams was a great teammate for him because he let him do that because no one was fucking with Russ with Stephen Adams right behind him. But you're right. There's not those guys, the Anthony Mason, Charles Oakley, uh, Antonio Davis, you know, those guys that Dale Davis, Lambeer. There aren't those guys that are there to enforce. You know, you look at guys like DeAndre Ayton and guys that are, are bigger dudes that they're, they're just, they don't do that. If I'm an NBA <clears throat> player, once I see a video of you dancing around in a circle, singing one of these corny songs of today you know what i mean that comes with a dance that comes with a tiktok i'm testing you i'm pressing you. <laughs> I, I am i am I okay so if, if if you if you had to fight an nba player you had to win to like you had money on the line you had to pick an nba player to fight who would it be <laughs> <laughs> that's a crazy question I know. there's money on the line and i gotta win <laughs> you gotta win i gotta win um, I'm gonna go. I start with the androgynous guys. I start with uh Kyle Kuzma. I smoke you, Kyle Kuzma. Kyle's, <laughs> all the dudes that all the dudes that um, what, what's her name? Kendall Jenner was dated Ben Ben Simmons. <laughs> you got no heart, Ben Simmons. I smoke Ben Simmons. I wish Ben Simmons. I wish Ben Simmons, and he won't even come back at me. I'm. <laughs> That'll be the end of the fight. I'll mush Ben Simmons. <laughs> Yo, it's just dudes. I don't know. I might I might just be too old, bro. I just don't see the heart in a lot of these dudes. I don't see it. Like they're not rough and rugged from what I'm used to. Like, you know, the guys that you just mentioned, you ain't fucking with those guys. Xavier McDaniel, uh -huh. you ain't fucking with none of those guys. Zoe, Alonzo Mourning, you're not fucking with these guys. The guys that today. Yeah, I'll I, I throw my hands with a lot of them, bro. I'm not scared of you, guys. <laughs> They're too worried about being cute, guys.